So how can you add value to a very patient customer? If you stick with me now, I'll show you some of the additional features that I put on sheaves or knives or ferro rods in order to just say thanks for all your patients waiting for that job to come through. What we have here is a pancake kydex sheaf. Um, and what I'm doing to add some value to it is I'm spending some time using this, drag, this jig here and a dremel with an end mill carboid bit and using the jig on the back there to put basically mountain uh, lozenge cutouts apertures between each of the rivets that I can fit an inch and a half spacing in so when it gets to these here on the three quarter spacing it stays as it is for power cord to go through uh, but I'm going to spend a little bit of time and get these these slots here done uh, just to bump up the, the features on this sheaf. You can see the jig strip template I've mounted between this hole and this one because it's got ever such a slight slant to the sheaf. If it was straight, I'd be able to go right the way along, but it hasn't. So what I need to do now is disconnect this one. Just a very slim bolt and a wing nut. And I can straighten it up to the to the rest of the, the sheaf is because it was a big camp knife it's got a bit of a swoop to it so I've done those two and as you can see because the top of the, sh the knife has a bit of a bump to it from this point to this point wasn't a quite a straight line so it's a bit of a drop down and then from there to there will be straight now I can use the jig to go from this hole to this one in a straight line so here so it's a Sort of a bolt and then a wing nut. Just so I don't need a tool. I can do this by hand. I just come up into this corner and go like that. And then he lines up with this hole. That's straight now. Whereas the top one there had a bit of an angle down. I allow myself a little bit of play by having the um, the bolt a fair bit thinner than it actually takes to go down the hole so I can get a bit of a best fit going on like that so I can look there now this hole is lined up with the back of that that looks much neater snip it up not too tight because you take all the paint off of the rivets. So that's what it looks like on the back, but the side that matters is this side. Now I use the end mill router bit on the Dremel. You can see that the shank obviously doesn't have any cutting on it. Um, so that will ride on this as it goes through. So it's riding on the, the jig whilst it's cutting out the, the shape. I find it's better to plunge it through four or five times because it's an end mill. So there's actual teeth cutting sort of starts on the, on the end. I did, did three, four, five, and then I can go into one of the end holes and then finally go around and around and around. So it looks a bit like this. On. One, two, so I punch some holes in it and just give it a little bit of a chance. Double check you haven't got any stops and starts on the path that you've done. If anybody's used a CNC router, you'll always know where it's starting and finished because a little bit of a, a little bit of a bump. So you want to smooth that off. So if you were using a CNC, you just run it fast on a second pass. Okay, just just to finish it all out. 
So you've always got the option going back afterwards. Just tied in at the hole and then you're onto the second one, which would be this one here. Obviously, if you're holding the sheath there, you don't want any chance of this doing you. And You know, down casually. How did you do that then, mate? Well, right, that one. So, a bit more speed. sink hand deburring tool and I just put it on there and just run it backwards and forwards in the groove just to tidy up the little bits like that you could use a piece of sandpaper fold it over and go like that but all I've got to do now is do same again see the bit of a kick there so I can, go, I can do that one to there I'd have to bolt it separately to get that run but from there to there I could do a straight run and then I got to bolt it separately from there to there and you've got to have so many goes because they're not straight runs, if that makes sense. If you did a really straight sheaf and you had twin sort of parallel rows of rivets, you could just block the um, jig on him, two fell swoops, but I like having a little bit of shape to it. But it gives you the option of mounting with straps. Uh, it gives you the option of putting paracord through uh, and it looks pretty trick as well. So. That's how you add a bit of value to a sheaf. Uh, we'll make it look a bit trick, but say the customer's waited ages for this, so I just want to pimp it up a little bit for them. And thanks for all the patience. Any other tips and tricks videos I've got up on YouTube. Um, if you, this made of any value to you whatsoever, if all it was cool, there should be a couple more vids at the bottom there to move on and have a look at something else that I've done recently uh, in the last few weeks. Scott Wilson plays eight. Thanks for watching.